Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine. I have a flip through today of three journals that I recently completed. Uh, I used some very old books from the Thornton Bur W. Burgess Bedtime Storybooks series. And uh, they are very old. Uh, the Adventures of Mr. Mocker is 101 years old. The Adventures of Old Mr. Toad is also 101 years old. And uh, The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse is 99 years old. They're very similar in how I created them. I, as ever with junk journals, because I use repurposed supplies, they can't ever be exactly the same. But you're going to see many similarities. They all have five signatures. They all have 112 pages. They all have hand marbled end papers. Um, they all have bulldog clips with some tea dyed bias tape up there. You're going to see some similarities. So I'll go through Mr. Mocker detailed and explain things. And then with these two, I'll just flip the pages quickly and you're going to see, oh yeah, okay, that's, you're going to know what I mean. Um, I, I took a liberty this time and broke one of my own rules <laughs> and, uh, Danny Meadow Mouse has been reserved, but Mr. Mocker and old Mr. Toad will be available in my Etsy shop, um, quite soon after this video, however long it takes for me to create the listing. I always like to release the video a little bit early so that people can take their time and view the flip through and, uh, and see whether this is a journal that they might enjoy. So let's take a look through Mr. Mocker and uh, and then we'll take a quick little flip through of these two. And if the person who res reserved Danny Meadow Mouse, uh, for whatever reason, has decided it's not the book for them, um, then you never know. Danny Meadow Mice Mouse may also be listed. But as of right now, Danny Meadow Mouse is reserved. I, I did that before also with um, when I did five encyclopedias earlier in January and I allowed two of them to be reserved and I and I purposefully left three available for sale to, on a first come first serve in my shop. So let's take a look at the uh, size four and a half inches by uh, six and three quarter inches. And then the spine is one inch. They're quite uh, grubby looking. They're 101 years old, so uh, that doesn't surprise me in the least. But I have refortified them from the inside out. I've cleaned them as best I could and sealed the covers. And personally, I love when an old book looks like it's been well loved. I have put in a hidden hollow back spine into all of them. And there's also a little bit of lace at the top and at the bottom of each one and a little bit of tea dyed cheesecloth. Uh, if this isn't your thing, you don't enjoy that, you can trim that off and just have just have the lace and it'll look like that. So I leave that up to the new owner. Personally, I like the way it looks. Now you're going to notice here, um, they all have a lace tie, but I have designed this book to have the appearance that there's just so much wonderful things um, tucked inside that it's spilling out over the side. And I did that on purpose, but you're actually going to see that these are actually affixed and they're tuck spots, which I think is kind of fun. So let's take a look inside Mr. Mocker. So as you can see, hand marbled paper in sort of a woodland theme, which they all sort of have a slight woodland theme. There's a little label here uh, that you can put your name or whatever it is you wish to write in there. Maybe the dates of when you worked in it. This one has a little squirrel there. They all have a different um, animal. And here on this Dutch door, it's called, uh, I've used one of the flower fairies, one of the fairies from that series of books. This is the original first page from the book and you can see there that it was published in 1920. There's five tabs on the beginnings of each signature and they're all different and mismatched. You will be seeing um, some of you who are who have been kind enough to send me happy mail. You're going to see quite a bit of happy mail 
in here. So for example, the tabs came from Happy Mail and, and such. And if you see something that you sent me, please know I'm very grateful. Thank you so much for that. As ever, everything in my journals comes from other sources other than a big box store or digital prints. So I go to thrift stores, I go to church sales, I go to yard sales, I, um, it can come from estate sales, it can come from virage sale online. Uh, if it's a secondhand source and somebody has already loved it before, that's what I like to use. Even right down to my papers. I've made a tuck spot here from um, a time card from when you used to go to work and use a time card. Here's a little a little dried flower that I made using a coin uh, protector that coin collectors use. Uh, so you can see both sides of the little dried daisy in there. And that can go there if you like. In here, it's a double pocket. There's a vellum envelope and I made some word snippets from the actual text block from uh, Mr. Mocker. And there's some tea dyed paper there for journaling on. So I just tucked those there. Washi tape to fortify some of the old pages. These pages really weren't very good to repurpose. Usually I try to put more pages in when I'm using, when I'm restoring an old book and the papers were not that good. However, I will be sending along some extra pages when these go to their new homes. And uh, so don't worry, if you wanted to junk journal and create some things, there will be some going to the new home, to their new owners. A little bit of stamping here, a little, a little wolf cup. All thrifted sources for all these lovely woodsy colored blank pages. And as with the, the book I made recently from As You Like It, wherever possible, I put a torn edge. I like how that looks. A little stamp of an acorn there. This tuck spot is actually um, a tea dyed wedding uh, table placeholder. And then I've sewn it. And there's a little stamp there with an Eastern bluebird on it. But it's also a tuck spot. This is a tag that I've created to be a tuck spot, but to also look like it's falling out of the book. This is a page spread from a butterfly and moth uh, identification little book that's from 1929. So I wrote the year on it just in case you, just so you can remember. And then you can either use that cre to create ephemera or it's just fun to have in there. A little fussy cut tree and a fox stamp right there that I collaged and I like that Reddy Fox the character from the story is mentioned right beside where that little fox is. Uh, this um, pocket was uh, I received it in Happy Mail and it's actually from a book it's a page out of a, a book and then I used a recipe uh, divider card and I used the letter M for Mr. Mocker. And just tuck that in there and you can journal on that if you like. A little bit of lace along the edge that I have sewn. I've left all the threads long in all three books. If that's not your thing, just trim them off. They've been, they've been uh, knotted. A little bit of tea dyed bullet paper. And this page is out of a children's, um, a children's storybook. I believe it was from in the 40s, possibly 50s. Here's a little, uh, a little cute journaling spot. I've tucked in a red rose tea card. I believe that's a caribou. And uh, let's see. Oh, an elk. Um, you'll see here, it's got a little bit of glue damage. These books, uh, people my age, <laughs> not aging myself, but we used to collect these from out of red rose tea here in Canada and then keep them in albums. So some people would use glue in their albums. Some people would use tape. Um, so sometimes the back gets a little bit of damage. I was going to make this into a journaling card, but I thought the new owner may just like it the way it is, or else they can use it, they can make it into a journaling card themselves. So I left it as is. It fits back there. And then as you can see here, you can open this up and journal. 
and that's tea dyed. And then it closes back up again on itself. That's cute. Uh, a vintage postcard. I believe it's either 1960s or 70s. Again, from because I was there <laughs> in that time. Uh, it definitely looks like 60s or 70s. And especially the little hint of um, it's not white anymore. And there's no postal code for the address for the uh, for the printer. So that it says that Mrs. Skunk and family take a stroll. <laughs> I love that one. Each book has a bulldog clip, uh, oiled bronze. This is new. And it's got uh, a little bit of tea dyed bias tape on it. A little bit of Edith Holden. I don't think you can do a nature book and not put a little Edith Holden in it. There's a little stamping down here of a mushroom. I made uh, a tuck spread using um, a wildflower identification book. And in this one, I've put a chance card from a vintage Monopoly game. Uh, I still have the lid, and it is from, I believe, 1952. And a bit of sewing around the edge. Here's another um, tag that I created into a tab, but it's also a tuck spot. Oh, and it's got a tea dyed receipt in there, and it says it gives you a place to put the date in, and it's from... 19 whatever so that shows you that it's at least 21 years old and I did a little collaging here this is a page spread from a 1960s school atlas the other side of that little tuck spot and a vintage playing card quite a bit of um, vintage things in here Again, these threads, trim them if you like. Edith, the other side of Edith, a little fabric ruffle using the same fabric that you can see peeking between the signatures that I used to sew the new text block together. There it is right there. Uh, the tabs on all four, all, all three of the fourth signatures, I've put an eyelet and a little charm on. So for Mr. Mocker, there is a little butterfly and some beads on a rusted uh, bulb pin. This is from an old book that uh, I previously made into a junk journal. It was the end papers out of it that I saved because everything gets used eventually, sooner or later. Some tea dyed steno paper. This is from a vintage recorder um, book and uh, I think it is German but I'm not sure because I don't speak German. Some little stamping here, a bird's nest and the mama bird watching over it. Uh, this is from Happy Mail. It's a vintage card on the Eastern Mole. I mean, yes, the Eastern Mole, 1963. So I just tucked him in there. This paper is also was the end papers from another book that I cut apart and used already in another journal. Some more uh, pages from an old children's book, a, a Dick and Jane type book, only her name's Alice. A little tuck spot here that I used with some of the offcuts from the marbled paper, and it has a little bunny um, Victorian uh, illustration. Um, you can get these, they use these in books all the time now, and you can, I fussy cut them out and reuse, reuse them. And so I put a few little things in there. This is an old bridge tally and just a piece of cardstock. Some more lace sewn on. Here's a page out of um, A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh. This tuck spot was made from a tea dyed window envelope. It actually was quite a bit longer. I just wanted the top part with the window. Inside I created a journaling card from a recipe card, an old one. And uh, this is from the 1940s, this sticker. It's actually, you can see Red Riding Hood, there's the wolf. So I put a poisonous mushroom, dangerous. <laughs> there's a little bit of um, 
he dyed bridal lace there and some of this leftover lace that I used to sew along the edges there. And then the little word, word snippets that are on the tag here are actually from the, hold on, let's see. Oh, it won't do it. I'm trying to make sure that it's in focus. Uh, Joy and Gladness is from the original text block. And that just fits in there and you can see Red Riding Hood through that window. And I fussy cut some little wrens for the front. Then the back is also a tuck spot. And as ever, Sunnyside Journal, I've put um, a Two Nanas bookmark in there for you to use. A little stamping of a chipmunk. Another spread out of a wildflower book. Back of the Winnie the Pooh spread. And then I've put in, each one has a tea dyed library pocket and I stamped on it with a, a sunshine on it. And I created a library card for each one. I tea dyed it to make it look older. And I used my manual typewriter to fill in the spots that, uh, that were pertinent to each book. So that's Mr. Mocker. And now we'll take a quick look through the other two. So you can take a look-see. And you'll notice, yes, there will be similarities, but there will be slight differences. So let's take a peek at old Mr. Toad. So, sticker and squirrel, a little uh, flower fairy, and then again here, original first page and 1920. This one has little yellow wildflowers in it. An envelope with word snippets. Let's make sure you're in camera. Here, I'll show you that again in case that was cut off. A little bunny there. A little owl stamp. I used the letter O for old Mr. Toad on that card. A little lace. I love when there's layering of all different sizes. I just love that. Again. Um, I believe that's a baby, a baby caribou, a ah, baby moose. And you can see here, this, this collector used tape when they put it in their little keepsake album. And again, this opens up for journaling. And closes again. You can open it and close it as much as you like. A little bit of Edith Holden there. Ruffle. This is a vintage card that I received in Happy Mail, and it had leaves on it, so I thought it was appropriate. And you can turn that into a journaling card if you wish. Little bridge tally. Little Edith again. Here's another vintage postcard. And it's blank, so you can journal on it. And once again, as far as I can see, I believe it's 1960s because the postage due would be four cents. And the earliest I can recall um, when I started sending little letters to friends was eight cents. So, and that would have been the late 60s. So I believe four cents. I bet my estimate is about right. You can look it up. 
that I'm going to say early 60s, maybe, no, not late 50s, early 60s. Uh, this Old Mr. Toad has a little uh, toad charm on it. Again, this was a wine charm that I found thrifting. You just never know what you're going to find when you're thrifting. On a bulb pin with some little beads, little green beads. Here's a vintage playing card tucked into this little tuck spot that is also uh, a tab made from a tag. And there's a little wolf on there and some washi tape. I love how that looks. From the other side of that children's uh, Dick and Jane type reader. A little tuck spot here. So much room for you to do your own thing. Winnie the Pooh. A little more stamp. Oh, hold on. There we go. Window envelope with again a 1940s red riding hood sticker. And this one has chanterelle mushrooms. And I chose the words very beautiful from out of the original text block. And then there's room for journaling on the back. And she's got some woodpeckers keeping an eye on her out in the woods. And then a two nanas bookmark I've just tucked in behind. And then again, tea dyed library pocket and a library card that I have typed with my manual typewriter. So that's that's old Mr. Toad. Now let's take a look at Danny Meadow Mouse. As I mentioned, I did allow him to be reserved, but uh, just in case, if the, if the new owner has decided maybe it's not for them, um, I will do a quick flip through so you can take a look and see. And if you're like me, you just like looking through junk journals anyhow. So as ever, similar but different sticker and a little fox here the little mulberry fairy and 1922 for this one this one has a daisy tucked in there and vellum envelope with word snippets a little tea dyed receipt A little bunny there, since there was a bunny here. Uh, this is a vintage uh, card. It says deer on it. And a bridge card. And then that opens up and you can also journal there. And this is uh, another spread from that uh, butterfly and moth identification book from 1929. And a little bunny munching on some lettuce there. A little uh, collage here with a butterfly and some leaves from New Zealand stamp and a leaf. Lace sewn on. This one has a D for Danny, for Danny Meadow Mix and it can be journaled on. There we go. And that's that, that German recorder music page out of the 1960s school atlas. The wolf cub.
a little bit of Edith, a little butterfly sneaking away up there. Frill, a little top spot there. Bullet journal paper. And the chipmunk. This one is a red squirrel. And again, journaling space that you can open and close as much as you like. Um, Danny Meadow Mouse has a dragonfly charm. A little tuck spot here on the tag that is also a tab <laughs> on Winnie the Pooh page. And then another tuck spot here with the vintage playing card and a little piece of paper for journaling on. A little acorn stamp down there. Go back three spaces. Mm -mm. A little owl down there. He's dressed up like a monk. <laughs> In this window envelope that has some little birds fussy cut on it, um, again, little red riding hood heading to grandma's house, uh, morel mushrooms. And then again, that came from the original text block. Good things. A little bit of lace and journaling space. And two nanas tucked in the back. And this one has a vintage postcard with journaling on the back. Again, I believe it's to be 60s or maybe 70s. And again, a tea dyed library pocket and a manual typewriter of the author and title of the book. So that's Danny Meadow Mouse. So thank you for joining me for these flip throughs today. Again, very soon, as soon as I can get it prepared, um, Mr. Mocker and Mr. Toad will be available in my Etsy shop. And if you think this is something you might be interested in, I hope you'll go over and take a look. The link will be below. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. You can message me or else you can write them down below in the comments. Take care and have a great rest of your day.